It is Sir Mark Prescott ah. who's going to join us. Uh, Sir Mark, good morning. How good are you? Morning. Good morning. How are you? I haven't heard the rest of your programme because I'm clogging around the sales <laughs> in, that, in that rather dispiriting thing of trying to find value for money at the sales. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, they should be coming to you in droves, offering horses after the, the last week. H how are you after the success of, of Alpinista? I obviously had a brief chat with you on the day, um, and you, you mentioned that the, the emotion had caught you out a bit. Yes, I was surprised how, how much it did, and I just passed Roger Charlton, and he said, have your feet come down? Yes. And I said, no, no, I'd like to keep them up a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the response to the success of Alpinista, you know, there's that lovely photo of yourself and Jean-Claude Rougeau. So many well wishes, so many people, ha and I know, happy for Kirsten Rousing, happy for the horse, for Luke Morris, Annabelle, William Butler, etc. But there was a lot of, of goodwill for you. Um, were you were you overwhelmed by that in any yes, way? I think I was, and particularly in France, you know, um, uh, I hadn't. Well, you never think you're going to win those races, do you? You think the horse might win, but you never think you will. Um, yeah. And um, so, um, you know, yes, it was it was marvellous, and um, yeah, really great. It, the great, the best day of my of my racing life. I, I had previously thought it was when I rode my first winner, but I, I think that was better. I think that was better. It's funny because I was going to ask you later on whether or not winning the arc on Alpinista was as good as landing a touch with Pasternak in the Cambridge or something like that. Um, but but uh, you, you've already you already beaten me to the punch with that. Um, can, can I also ask about how you enjoyed the race? Because Kirsten was just on a few moments ago and she was talking about the fact she couldn't really see it, didn't quite get because of the weather, etc. Didn't quite get a sense of what was going on. But um, you were in the paddock. I know you were watching on the screen. Um, what was it like again when Luke Morris was travelling so well on on the Great Grey Mare? Yes, I just thought we were going too well. This can't be one of mine. It was just going too <laughs> well. Um, and um, and uh, I think Mike Dillon was next to me. Apparently, he said he could hear me just saying, "Wait, wait, wait." <laughs> and then he heard me say, "Go, go, go!" <laughs> and he said afterwards that the. Fortunately, the jockey had waited longer than me. <laughs> so it was, when, a, it was a great day. When, when had you concocted the, the tactics for the race and, and how did you come up with it? Um, Alain Roya Dupre very kindly rang me. He's a friend of Tony Esler's who always used to ride for me as, in amateur races. And Alain came to see me last year and, and he very kindly rang in the evening. And, um, um, you know, he, he just emphasised what he how he thought um, he's won two arcs and been second in three, so I listened very carefully. Did you hear that? So, no, just just lost you there, Sir Mark. Sorry, Sorry. the last bit. Um, I, I, Alan, Alan Roya Dupre um, came round stables with me last year. He's a friend of Tony Esler's, and he very kindly rang on Friday night, and he's won two arcs and been second in three, so I... I listen very carefully. Ah. <laughs> uh, thank you to Alan de Roy de Prey then. Now, um, a little bit about Alpinista and the family. We had Kirsten talking about how, obviously, you train Al Wilder, Al Bonova, um, and, and the patterns, obviously, that you, having trained all the family, would have, uh, have, uh, have learned from and, and adapted. You know, what, sort of, what sort of early indications did Alpinista give you? that she could be trained in a similar manner, perhaps, to her granddam, or, or was it anyway like that? Um, in, uh, in lots of ways, not, in that physically she's much more like her mother. Um, but uh, I think I heard Mr Mellish say that, you know, they, they want to go and they hold their heads in the right place, and uh, Alvarado was the same, and, you know, they're very, very genuine and they give you what they can, and... And all four of the very good ones were simply wonderful rides. You could put them anywhere you wanted in a race. And as you know, that wins you races because you can ride yours uh, to the disadvantage of the opposition. Mm -hmm. um, we, we tried to ask Kirsten about um, whether or not she'll, she'll definitely go to Japan. Um, is there a particular factor? Is it as simply a case of whether the horse is right, she goes? Is that as simple as that? I, I don't know. It's very much for, for Miss Rousing to decide. Um, the filly has come out of the race very, very well, as she has all her races. Um, she cantered a day later, 
um, and uh, she's eating wonderfully well. So she's in very, very good nick. So it's a, it's a, a difficult problem because, of course, I think particularly for Miss Rousing, it would be awful to get her beat after this fairy tale sequence. Mm. I, I can absolutely understand that. Um, then there's all the thing of, well, oh dear, racing is dangerous. But as we know, horses find ways to, to kill themselves in the paddock, but just as easily as they do on the race course. Mm. You know, the dangers are always there with any livestock. So, you know, there's a lot for her to weigh, to weigh up. But the, uh, until the arc, we all thought, all of us thought, that she was better on fast ground. Well, can I ask you a little bit about the rider? Um, you mentioned the fact, as almost as they crossed the line, you, you know, talking about thanking other people, you know, you thank Kirsten Rousen for all the horses that you've trained. You also thank Luke Morris, and you mentioned the fact that he's been with you for 11 years, and we know, obviously, prior to that, George, etc. Um, that was a, a special moment for the relationship, and, and I was struck when I spoke to Luke Morris, I think just a couple of days ago, how emotional he still is after winning the race. What, what was the aftermath like with him? Um, I think it was, a, and he's very professional, and um, you know the, he's the ultimate professional. You know, he's always on time. He's never late. He's always gone through the race carefully. Um, you know, he's he's the professional, and um, so uh, I think it means a lot for him to be in the. He's, he's used to being professional in the sort of darker corners of racing where people aren't watching all the time. And I think to come good and ride a superb race, you'd be surprised how many other trainers have stopped me on the way around here in the last few days and said, what a wonderful race he rode. Mm. I think it's a marvellous thing for him to be in the limelight, in the sunshine, and people see what he can do. It's, it, it's funny because obviously throughout the last 10, 11 years that he's been with you, people talk about how professional he is, how hardworking he is. Um, but I guess the nature of, of competitive sport is that to, to be recognised for how talented you are, you, you, you've got to do it at the highest level. Is, is it as brutal as that, in your opinion, do you think? Yes, it is. And, of course, Luke's career, and he won't mind me saying, is, has been hampered by looking so ungainly in a finish. Now, it's, <laughs> it's, it's extraordinarily effective. Mm. Um, and uh, I have been unable to tame it. And... Um, I've also, um, you know, I don't know anything about golf, but people tell me once you interfere with somebody's swing, sometimes they're never as good again. And so I've never wanted to change too much, but I think, you know, there's no doubt that his ungainly style does not uh, appeal to people um, uh, at, the, at the top of the sport, the top of the trainer's list. Uh, but, you know, he's tactically very, very good. Uh, he's never been afraid in his life, um, and um, but <laughs> he's defeated my efforts to to polish his <laughs> style. Uh, but the horses, as you know, from the number of we're very lucky to have each year a few multiple winners, um, and you don't get that with a jockey who has in any way brutalised the horse. So the horses, you know, they respond very well, um, but it's not attractive and. Uh, um, I'm, I'm never going to. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to change it. <laughs> my my old cricket coach used to say, "It's uh, not how, it's how many." Uh, yeah. Just look in the school book. So that's the most important thing, ultimately. Um, just just looking at uh, at some of the, the the horses. We we just reflected on some of the other horses that um, that you've trained for Kirsten Rousing, in particular Alborada. And we were talking about her win in the the champ. Obviously, she's related to Alpiniston. We were talking about her win in the Champion Stakes in 1999. Uh, two things struck us in the in the conversation with um, Kirsten Rousing just a moment ago. One was the fact that she had that rough race at Goodwood in the Nassau, but yet she, that was her only run before going back to try and defend her title in the Champion Stakes, which was a wonderful training performance. But also the fact that Kirsten Rousing said that she represented the pinnacle for her. Um, obviously, in the aftermath of Alpinissa's win in the arc, I just wondered what your reaction to that might have been. Yes, well, everybody always says the same thing when they're asked to compare different generations. Um, and uh, I think um, uh, Alborada and Alpinista had a, had a lot in common um, with them. Alborada, the, the year she won the second champion stakes, she'd been difficult to train. She wouldn't come. She didn't look as well as usual. She didn't eat as well. We had to wait, wait, wait. And then, then she slipped up at uh, oh, Mr. Footing at Goodwood. 
And so it was a great day when she finally came right. And um, we had a very interesting gallop with a marvellous old horse I had called Farmost. And he'd worked with her before she won her first champion stakes. And Miss Rousing quite rightly said, well, you know, we don't want to run her and she's not going to run well. And so before the champion stakes, she worked with Farmost. And they exactly, exactly repeated the gallop <laughs> that they'd done a year and a bit before, a year before, exactly a year before. Wow. And so when I had my Sunday call with Miss Rousing, she said, oh, do you think she'll run to form? And I said, well, I'll tell you the truth, I haven't a clue, but Farmo says she'll just win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. So it's the, very the unusual other... they produce Gallop as accurately as that, you know. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it's certainly a template that works. Um, one uh, amusing aspect of, of the ARC experience has been the fact that, obviously, a lot was made of the fact that you, you didn't travel, you hadn't travelled before to watch Group 1 uh, races abroad. But you made the journey... Um, but it wasn't without its moments of uh, uh, in interest, I, I imagine. Well, uh, no, it all started off poorly with the plane wouldn't start. And, and then we had we were going to Stansted and then we had to go to uh, Luton. And then when we got to France, the, the customs people had left and the police had left. And, <laughs> and that, there was just an air of tension amongst us all. And then walked the course and I was at the furthest point when it started to pour with rain. <laughs> And you know how wet it was. Yes. I've never never seen any interviewer look wetter than you. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and uh, under my coursing jacket, I was soaked as well. So um, uh, you know, it had the the, the uh, it had all the signs of what the French that wonderful word the French have catastrophe. Um, <laughs> it was all looking a bit catastrophe, but uh, it, it it was just a great day, and I don't suppose I'll have a better and to have it. You know, when you've been at it a long time. It was a wonderful moment, you know. I'm very grateful. Uh, one thing struck me as well, post-race, uh, and I know there may have been jest in what you were saying about, you know, uh, your your uh, assistant, William Butler, saying, oh, no, he's going to carry on for a, a bit longer. I mean, had you been thinking that you're you're close to, to calling it a day, handing the reins over? Well, you, you must be, but I, obviously every year that goes by, you, you're, you're, you're nearer. And I suppose for William, there's always that hope but um, on a great moment like that, you'd say, well, that's enough. But unfortunately for him, it had the reverse effect, and I thought, I can totter on a bit longer. So poor old William, I mean, it is a nightmare, you know. Yeah. Seemed to be going on longer than the Queen Mother, but there we are. <laughs> so, what, what but of course, trying... it's, thank, it's thanks to him doing lots of, of, of it that you're able to keep going. So, And being a young man, you just hope that you know, most trainers in the end... Mm. However well they do, they run out of owners because your owners are old. And uh, oh. so the great thing for William now is to is to uh, well he, he's shown what he can do training, but is to try and find us some new owners. Otherwise, we're we're going to gradually slip away simply because you don't get the uh, oh. the, the intake every year. Well, uh, it's been a, a good advert for what Heath House can do over the last uh, couple of weeks. So. Um, Hopefully, you shall remain as buoyant as ever. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Good luck at the sales. Have you got your eye on anything in particular yet? And yes, no, no I've, secrets? Got, I've got my eye on, on all sorts of things which I can't possibly afford. <laughs> and uh, we'll have to just hope we get lucky because at the sales, I'm sure you're all the same. You, when you buy a good one, you always say, I liked him immediately, forgetting, of course, that you tried desperately to buy 19 others beforehand. <laughs> so I love the honesty. hope that the luck comes right, yeah. Yeah, well, I love that honesty. Uh, Sir Mark Prescott, ARC winning trainer, thank you so much for joining us on Luck on Sunday. Thank you both, thank you. And we're delighted to say that Kirsten Rousing is on the line now. Kirsten Rousing, good morning, how are you? Good morning, fine, thank you. Um... Can you just take us back to Sunday and the reaction to Alpinista's success and being in that paddock at Longchamp with the, the, the good feeling that so many people seem to have for yourself, Luke, Annabelle and, of course, Sir Mark? Well, obviously, it was a fantastic reception for the mayor herself and, uh, of course, particularly Sir Mark and Luke. Um, the French went wild. Uh, there was lots of cheering and shouting and clapping and uh, selfies with Sir Mark and so on, to the extent that he found it quite difficult to 
traverse the throng and William Butler had to um, assist him, assist the rock star getting through the crowd. <laughs> oh, I love that. When he comes on later on the show, I look forward to calling in rock star Sir Mark Prescott. Um, can, can you tell us a little bit about what it was like watching Alpinista especially the moment she turned into the straight and Luke Morris appeared to be going so much better than many around him? Well, to tell you the truth, it was actually quite difficult to see it live because of the weather condition. There was, there'd been heavy rain throughout and certainly a, a significant drizzle during the, the passage of the race. Plus, of course, all the jockey's colours were quite mud-covered so it was a bit difficult to see it live, but we could tell that um, uh, the wonderful heroine was going quite comfortably and Luke seemed to be in complete control of the situation, which indeed he was. And obviously you've been trying to breed good horses for a long time and doing so successfully. But the achievement of winning the ARC, it's, it's one of those races that people talk about growing up, uh, all, the, all the big owner breeders, they all want to win this particular Group 1 race. To have finally achieved it, what, what did that mean to you? Well, it is marvellous. Um, I have to say, we've bred some good horses over the years. In fact, I think about uh, 24 Group 1 wins, if not 27 by now. Um, and we have bred one or two animals that have been higher rated than even Alpinista. So um, although it's been a long time coming, obviously she is my very first runner in the arc in my own colours. I have bred horses who run in the arc, but nothing in my own colours. Um, and uh, I would again uh, emphasize that uh, none of this could have been possible without the marvelous assistant of my home team at Landwades, uh, St. Simon and Staffordstown Stars, and of course uh, by Sir Mark Prescott's excellent training uh, and uh, Luke Morris's uh, flawless riding. Um, and let's not forget the entire Heat House team in Newmarket. They also contributed to that great success. A number of very significant factors contributing to the success of Alpinista. Uh, one important element that Sir Mark actually mentioned in the immediacy after the race, he said that you know, he's trained, I believe, three generations. She's the third, so he had Albanova, Al Wilder, and now Alpinista. But of course, you go back to Alouette prior to that for you. And um, that the whole process, the, the long-term process, and the word patience being, I, I imagine, at the forefront of the approach. Is that fair? I hope so, yes. <laughs> um, this, this family um, has been with me for five generations, four of them homebred. And uh, the original fourth dam, Alouette, was trained by my great friend Jim Bolger at Cool Cullen. And Sir Mark has trained the next three generations. And all four of these generations, um, Alouette, Albanova, Alwilda, and now Alpinista, they're all stakes winners, uh, two of them listed winners and two of them group winners, group one winners, in fact. So um, the catalogue page looks pretty, uh, if you like that sort of thing, um, it's pretty well all black, which I like. And, and even adding to that as well, the, the grandsire of uh, Alpinista, Hernando, who you also stood at, at Landways as well. So. I, I, the, the, I, I can't even begin to imagine the, the pride uh, that would be involved in being associated with something like that. Well, there is a certain amount of pride, but there is an immense gratitude involved to horses themselves and to those who tend them. 
and, and understandably so. Um, it's very difficult sometimes for, for us who are, we'll never own or have the opportunity to, to be involved at that sort of level at the sport, but <laughs> we try and get messages out of what's happened in the Alpinista story. And the one thing that struck me was the fact that so many people spoke about sort of the, the virtues of, of, of being involved with the team, notably loyalty and tradition. Tradition to breed horses, middle distance horses, which of course you have the opportunity to do that. The loyalty of, of being involved with the same people, Sir Mark Prescott, he's involved with all the family of Albinista, uh, Alpinista. And, and of course, uh, Luke Morris, the loyalty to the rider. Um, is, is that a message that you think we can all, all appreciate and benefit from? Yes, I would hope so, but let's not think that it's to the detriment of of uh, new involvement in the sport. Um, I would add that obviously Sir Mark has been training for 53 years. I've been breeding for a little bit longer than that, in <laughs> fact, <laughs> um, in various countries, um, but for the last 42 in this country. Um, so Mark and I have worked together for 36 years. Luke Morris has been Sir Mark's stable jockey for 11 years. And William Butler has been with Sir Mark for 20 years. So it's, it's a long, ongoing commitment by all parties. And of course, my own commitment to the AL family, originally uh, one of His Highness the Aga Khan's studs, um, has been, you know, um, going on 35, 40 years as well. And before that, even in another branch of the family. But, um, you know, I, I am delighted that patience has been rewarded <laughs> and loyalty perhaps also, even more so. Um, but let's not, um, let's not make uh, this in any way some kind of um, obstacle to um, new investment or new enthusiasts joining the racing game. But hopefully they will, whoever joins the racing game can, can learn from the virtues of patience and perseverance, especially when it comes to dealing with horses. Um, there is the pros prospect of obviously Alpinista running again this season. Is it confirmed that Japan is the plan for Alpinista? Well, at this early stage, we can confirm nothing. She ran only seven days ago. Um, so I think we need to give her a bit of a, um, a bit of rest and relaxation at this stage. And then she and Sir Mark will no doubt have ongoing discussions. But at the end of the day, the mayor herself will decide where she wants to go. Um, and she'll, she'll be retired at the end of the season. That's the plan, yes. I, I just wanted to ask about her half-sister, um, Alpen Bloom, who's in France, because if you look through the line of the family, they all peak at five, it seems. <laughs> um, and I believe she turns five next year, and she's had a, a pretty good spell of things already. She's shown a lot of promise. Is that right? Well, she only turns four next year. Oh, she's no, four. Only... four. Uh, lo lots of time. <laughs> yeah, lots of time. And she's already a winner of three and uh, stakes placed. She might go once more again this year. Um, I think there's a race for her in about eight or nine days' time. Well, and she, uh, she's trained by up-and-coming young trainer Tim Donworth, who trains in Chantilly. This is his first full season, and he has been um, tremendously successful with uh, a number of winners and... Um, Group two placed a two-year-old only yesterday. Wonderful stuff, and I cannot wait to see what she does over the next two seasons. Very exciting times for Alp and Bloom. Remember the name. We hopefully all the viewers of luck on Sunday. Um, we're going to just take a moment to indulge, if we can, um, Kirsten, because uh, obviously. Al Alpinista goes back to Alouette, the fourth dam, who's also uh, the dam of Alborada, and we're approaching Champion Stakes time here. And Alborada, of course, is a dual champion stakes winner. And we're going to look back at the success in 1999 in particular, because I thought has to go down as one of the most remarkable training performances. She only had two runs in the 1999 season. One was in the Nassau, 
and then after the Nassau, she went straight on to, to the champion stakes. What were your memories of, of that occasion? Well, she had um, she had a very uh, incident-ridden passage in the Nassau where she slipped on the slightly greasy bend. It had rained beforehand. So um, she nearly came down and uh, one was terribly worried about her having been injured, but thankfully um, it was, uh, she was all right. Um, and then we had to wait, 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 wait <laughs> until the um, champion stakes. And um, uh, she had one not over uh, exciting gallop with a year <laughs> young mine. And Samar was, uh, at that stage, doubtful to run her, but he did, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, just watching uh, George Duffield doing doing his stuff on on Alborada. I mean, when you were talking about horses that are the higher rated than Alpinista, I mean, I, and I know they're no favourites, but um, where would Alborada rank in in terms of your appreciation? Well, I would say to me, she is the pinnacle. Alvarado, the pinnacle, Alpinista, the arc winner. Uh, so many wonderful horses to choose from. <laughs> um, uh, and, and Kirsten, just very, very briefly on a, on a personal level, I, I saw you walking around at, uh, at, at Longshot. Are you 100% fit? Is everything OK? Because you, you did sport a boot, which I have to say that you moved with ease, despite <laughs> it, in the rain as well. Yes, it's fantastic what a, what a big win can do. The adrenaline goes <laughs> down to the feet. Yeah, no flying dismounts, but wonderful. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's been wonderful to catch up, and we, we cannot wait to see Al Alpinista in action, wherever that may be, um, and we hope that uh, she finishes her career in, in the style that she deserves. Thank you. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.